Hello and welcome to Sweet Spot DFS. This is a 2020 preview for the CJ Cup. Good news for you guys. I already screwed up. Oh, I shouldn't say screwed up. I just did, but I already recorded in an hour long video, went through half of it, realized I did some stupid things and I'm like, ah, screw it. If you guys didn't know already, obviously you guys can tell, there are no edits in these videos. I like doing them live all the way through. Usually once I get to a certain threshold, I'm like, screw it. It's going through all the way through from here. So I just, I, I, I listened to it. I'm like, ah, I really don't care for that. I'm going to create another one. So here I am create another one, but this is going to be a lot faster than that one. That one was 54 minutes. This one should be closer to 50. Who am I kidding? It's probably going to be an hour long. Um, I hope, I hope it's not, but we all know how I am in these videos. So if it's your first time you've been warned. If it isn't, um, Hey, welcome back. Anyways, let's get into the course information. CJ cup being played at nine bridges. Uh, it's a golf course in the Jeju Island, or I don't know how you would say it, but it's in Jeju Island, South Korea, not North Korea. We already know that, right? We know there's not going to be a golf tournament played in North Korea. Um, it's your typical par 72 golf course, four par fives, four par threes. Um, again, 7,200 yards is like near the average of PGA Tour events. So it's not too long. It's not too short. Should play decent. We'll get into, this, uh, into the spreadsheet and see what uh, the results have been like the last two years. Because this is the third year it's ever been played. It's bent grass all the way around. Uh, which is awesome. I love bent grass. If we get to watch the, the tournament on TV, I just don't know, you know, what kind of coverage they're going to have. You will see an immaculate golf course, bent grass, typically manicured properly. If it, I mean, it's a PGA tour event, it's going to be, it's going to look amazing. Uh, each hole is fairly tree line. So, um, actually we'll get into that a little bit later. This golf course was designed by a golfing firm called The Golf Plan, and it had two guys that kind of headed that. One was a horticulture expert, and the other one was an architect. Uh, I don't remember their names, but I don't think it's really worth talking much about them. I just wanted to mention it. We don't see them on tour anywhere else. Uh, so that's the course information. Let's get into the, uh, the spreadsheet. Here's where I'll start talking about the golf course. Uh, this is the notes page of my spreadsheet. I have the notable information that I find important. Uh, fairly tree-lined golf course. So every hole that I saw when I looked at it had trees lined on each hole. Now there's a lot of space between, let's say the fairways and the trees. So there's a lot of rough that as long as it's not really thin or short, or in a sense, you know, cut short, um, I, I mean, I don't see anyone ever getting in trouble in the trees. Um, so I don't think it's, it's that big of a deal. There are five holes with water that come into play that golfers can find themselves in. That's why it says five holes with penal water. Um, one of them is on a green that has to be the longest green I've ever seen on tour. Uh, it is a weird snake type green and on the second half of that green behind it is water. I'm guessing it'll come into play there and typically how tournament coordinators set up the golf course, you will have two pins in the back, two pins in the front, you know, throughout the four day tournament. And I almost forgot, I, I didn't mention this until late in the last video I created. This is a no cut event. It's a limited field, so there's 78 golfers. It's a no-cut event. All the golfers, as long as they don't withdraw, will be playing all four rounds of golf. So it's worth mentioning. You don't have to be. You don't have to worry about the cut happening like we have had to the last couple tournaments. Have been brutal, um, but yeah, that's notable information that should be on here. No cut, limited field. Uh, penalties probably don't matter all that much. I would say, well, we'll see. I don't know if really placement points are going to matter that much. Uh, it just depends on how low the scores go. If they're if they're not low scores, um, and they're higher, like tor towards even, 
then then placement points will matter. But I think it'll be fairly low scoring. That's another another thing that transitions me or makes me think segues into another uh, aspect. Weather. We saw during the, the, the Texas tournament, the storm came in Friday and it annihilated a bunch of golfers. I don't think, I mean, there's rain forecasted for Friday, but there's no storms and the temperatures stay about the same throughout all four days. I think it's going to be totally fine. It's tropical weather, I believe. So it should be pretty decent. I think golfers are going to have a heyday, and I think the scores are going to be fairly low. I, I, I'm going to say around like 15 under, 16 under. Um, I think those those that will be the score, the winning score. Uh, some more notable information. So I didn't know this before, but Brooks Kepka had uh, minor knee surgery before the uh, the beginning of the season. So just after the tour season, um, maybe that's why he was rusty during the Shriners and missed the cut. Uh, if that's the case, then I mean it's worth it's worth mentioning. It's worth monitoring, but I don't. I'm not sure. He's probably the best athlete for for golf, uh, which probably allows him to heal a bit faster. So I don't know. Play at your own risk. Matt Jones and Pat Perez withdrew last week. That marks Matt Jones's second time withdrawing this year out of four tournaments. Don't know what's going on there. I have no idea, uh, and I really don't know why Pat Perez. I think it was his back. Uh, causing him issues and there are twice as many golfers this year than any of the other or the last two years that are coming into this tournament with zero recent form meaning they have not played in the last seven weeks so that is actually higher than we've ever seen by double uh, of this tournament the last two years so that's also worth mentioning I want to look at the results page just so you guys can see the different scores. So Brooks Kepka won it last year, 21 under, and this was with immaculate weather. So it was warm, uh, pretty still scoring weather. So 21 under, probably the cap. Uh, I don't think it gets any higher than that. Nine under, that was during, I think, either one day or two days of kind of coldish, rainy weather. Um, so I think this is probably the low end of the scoring. I think it actually can be a bit higher than that. Um, yeah, like I said, I think it's going to be around like 15, 17, somewhere in there. I think that's going to be the winning score this this year. And it could get lower, but I think it's a pretty safe guess. And with that being said, I don't think placement points really matter other than first and second and third. Preferably third, but you can get away with a fourth or a fifth. Um, as your top three guys. If we look into the course history, again, this tournament has only been played two years prior to this year. So really there isn't any course history. We either have first timers or golfers who haven't golfed it since two years ago or golfers who just haven't golfed it at all. But of the golfers that have golfed it, here is the recent, or I mean the course history uh, from best to worst, you know, sorted on average. You see two golfers here who have two top tens. That's Pat Perez and Cam Smith. Pat Perez being the golfer we just talked about with the withdrawal last week. Um, I do like Cam Smith this week. I think it's worth a pretty decent play. Um, I don't know really what to make of course history. I would rather there be, you know, I like around five years, you know, of data before really, you know, digging into course history. Now, last week we saw Russell Henley, who had you know like five years of top ten finishes in a row, barely make the cut. Uh, actually, did really well prior to the cut, uh, and then his weekend just shattered. You know, he felt like 60th place. So obviously that ruins his run of top tens. Hey man, Cam Smith or Pat Perez could have a run of top tens. You know, at this tournament. It's only been played here twice. I don't think any of them are really, you know, fatigued or anything like that. So I don't know. I just, it, who cares really, right? I, I don't think it really matters. It's, I think it's just fun to mention. So uh, yeah, Rafael cabrera Bale and Jason Day with pretty decent stats, you know, 11th place in 2018, followed up with the top five in 2019. Um, I just don't. I'm not going to put a lot of weight on course history, so I'm not going to really think about that. If we go into recent form, 
Um, I'm gonna scroll over to the right and show you the the bucket, you know, of the recent form averages. So right here, this number is this counts all of golfers who did not or who do not have recent form. So if we go like 2019 and scroll over and look, you'll see there's six. If we look at 2018 and scroll over, you'll see there's 11. So that's where I got the twice as many golfers coming into this tournament with zero recent form than any of the last two years of either of the last two years. So it's worth mentioning. Another thing worth mentioning, look at the recent form average 60 to 80, above 80 and no recent form. There are zero golfers inside the top five or top 10 in 2018. You see two in 2019. Um, and I, again, I'm sorry for not showing you here. Let's fix that on the, well, during the video, we'll fix it. Cause I, I say it all the time and I forget. But let's go ahead and that way you guys can see that I'm not just giving you BS. I'm not feeding you BS. So you can see the 2019 um, tab right down here. Uh, and these are all the tabs I work with when I, when I go through this and, and talk to it or talk about it with you guys. Uh, so 2020 recent form. Um, Basically what I was getting at with all that is let's avoid the 60 to 80 above 80 and no recent form. And that actually will take out a lot of golfers when we get to the DK page. Um, so yeah, one last, th well not last thing, but I do want to look at the 2019 DK page just to go over a few things. So again, we have recent form. Uh, if I scroll over here though, uh, just so you guys can see, Here's the result. I have it sorted by result, first to last. Uh, and then if I come over here, keep the name here, show you the rest of the stats. Um, you can see recent form. You want decent recent form. Uh, last year probably doesn't hurt. And I typically go by last, I, I go with last year buckets and last week buckets. I'm not going to this week. Uh, just not enough data. To, to really go by that. I only have one year's worth of last year data, two years worth of last week data, and it's all over the place. So I'm not, it's just, there's not enough. But one thing I do want to get your attention to is the bent grass stats. So we have 2018 bent grass. So that was the year, you know, prior to last, obviously, and how well golfers have done. So you have Ryan Palmer and Scott Piercy not having the greatest 2018 bent grass stats. Overall, everyone coming into this had decent overall bent grass stats. So that's also something to mention. And if we scroll down, you'll see a bunch of golfers with 60s. Um, I mean, you got, you see a 19 there. Justin Thomas, you know, didn't do the greatest last year. Can't remember what was going on with him, but um, you'll see many more golfers down here. I shouldn't say many, but you do see quite a bit uh, compared to the top of golfers that have terrible Ben grass stats here at the bottom of the leaderboard. Uh, so that's the 2019 DK page. Again, now you guys can see what the spreadsheets are down there. Uh, let's go into the tee times. Thankfully for you guys, once again, I already went through this. I'm not going to talk about the groups I don't like. I did that in the last video. I don't think it really helps you guys out. Um, I like to think that if I do talk about you know, every group or go through some of these groups, at least, you know, that I'm, you know, highlighting them and maybe talking about them. I can easily just go, yeah, I don't know how Vaughn Taylor's going to play with Danny Lee. Does it matter? Probably not. You would rather probably hear the golfers I do like or the golfers I really like. So we'll just go through this fairly quick. I like Scott Piercy and when I went through this the first time, I'm like, uh, Scott Piercy pretty much, you know, beats to his own drum. I don't think it matters who he's playing with. And I actually don't think it helps any of the other playing partners playing with Scott Piercy. He's to himself a lot. Uh, I don't think he's really a golfer that's very personable. You don't see it when they walk together. I could be completely wrong on that. Uh, I just don't think it helps. So I don't, I wouldn't pair any of those guys up. I mark this group as a two because I don't really think 
any of them play off of each other unless Phil Mickelson is having a good day. That's the only time I think that maybe Justin Thomas will benefit from it. Um, Mark Leishman, I think, is a really nice guy. A lot of people like him. Uh, and, and I just don't know his friendship with Phil or Justin Thomas. Not saying they need to be friends, but I just don't know how that, that... It's just a question mark for me, basically, that group. I do like Justin Thomas a lot. I just... You know, Phil's kind of on the down swing of of golf. Uh, obviously, he still has enough power. He still has enough talent, but he's just not putting it all together. So, and that was all of last year, minus his one victory. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna. I, I'm probably not gonna target any of those golfers all that much. Um, I do like Ian Poulter, but pairing him up with like JB Holmes is not gonna be a thing. Because I don't, I I literally don't think Ian Poulter has the patience to golf with JB Holmes, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if he says something throughout that entire round, unless JB changed his ways and plays a little faster. Uh, I just don't think Ian Poulter is gonna be helpful whatsoever, and I don't think Ian Poulter would be helpful for any any golfer, honestly, except for maybe Tiger Woods and a few of his other buddies that are on tour. So that group, I'll probably stay away from. Although I do like Ian Poulter. Uh, and Adam Long a little bit. I marked this as a three because you've got two whiny ass motherfuckers and uh, Jordan Spieth and Sergio Garcia. I literally don't think uh, all you have to do is put Bubba Watson in that group. And I think it's the worst group you could ever have a foursome with. I just would not want to golf with any of those golfers unless they're on their good days. But if they're all whining, like they're not helping each other out and that's negative like negativity courses through everyone much faster than positivity. And I just, those guys have to be golfing well. If any of them complains, Sergio's very outspoken. He could literally complain to Jordan. Jordan can get off his game. And then there's little Tommy Fleetwood. Like, what's he going to do? Is it just better to play him by himself? Or maybe you pair these guys up and because you're listening to me, you go, well, hey man, the universe might think differently. It might be the opposite of what you think. Very well could be. And maybe I'll just make one lineup with all three of them in there. Or I'll make three li- I'll make four lineups and just do a mixture of a bunch of different things. And then just mix and match them in the rest of the lineups. That's, that's doable for me. Um, I do really like Joaquin Neiman and Dylan Fratelli. I think Chez can also play off of those guys. He's more of the quiet guy. Well, they're all fairly quiet. But I think their, their game speaks loud. So I think they'll be pushing each other to do well. And I like that group quite a bit. I really like Charles Howell III this week. I also like Pat Perez. They both have good bentgrass stats. And Max Homa, I think, I mean, I, he's, a, he's kind of an interesting Twitter follow. Like, he's fun uh, to, to watch and, and listen to. Uh, very bright guy, smart dude. I like him, but I don't know how he's going to play in this group. Pat Perez is very to himself. Charles Hall III is kind of to himself. And I think I think they're both... I know these guys... I can't remember if they're both in California, but they obviously do well on the West Coast, you know, doing the West Coast swing. So that's why I'm trying to think they're both from California. I just... I can't remember. Um, so yeah, I like that group. Uh, nothing much to say. I do like Har- Harold Varner the third and uh, Tyrrell Hatton. I just don't know how they're going to play off each other. But definitely a group I like. I don't know about him. I'm not going to talk a lot about uh, the Asian golfers this this week. I like Luke List. Um, and when we get into the spreadsheet, you'll see conflicting reasons why I like him. Uh, but I do like him this week. He he, he played this golf course pretty well two years ago, I think. Uh, and then if you were to pair him up, Wyndham Clark would be the guy you would do that with. We go with the Gary Woodland, Jason Day, Sung M group. I think it's a very good group, and I think they can play off each other pretty well. All nice guys who have serious game. Um, I don't think you're going to really hear any of them, you know, cheer each other on, but you're going to just, you'll hear a lot of nice shots, good shot, whatever. And the, the, I think if if two of them are doing above 
above average for them, the other guy's going to pick his slack up too. That's how I feel about this group. So I do think they play off each other in a positive way. That's all I got to say about that. I like Justin Hadley this week. Uh, Rafael cabrera Bale actually has good course history, so maybe they play off of each other. I don't know anything about Chase Kepka, Brooks's brother. Uh, I don't know about his game. I know they play together in the uh, the Zurich Classic. Uh, they have the last two years and haven't really done well. So, but I just I don't know what his game's like, so I can't really tell you how he's going to play with those guys. But I do like uh, Hadley and and Rafa. The big group that I think. I, I mean, I like Hideki a lot this week, and now I like him even more because he's playing with Brooks. Uh, and that also bumps up Siwoo Kim for me because I really like Siwoo Kim as well. So I'll be playing a lot of uh, Matsuyama and Kim together, and then I'll also play some Kim with Brooks Kepka. Uh And maybe one or two with Hideki and Brooks, but it's that's kind of fool's gold for how much they cost. It's It doesn't leave you with much. Um... This group, not terrible. Uh, they're, I, I think they play off each other. This is another positive group. I think they'll benefit each other. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Nate Lashley, Keith Mitchell, Troy Merritt for those listening. I know I haven't really named out any names, but now I will. Uh, Matthew Wolf, Putnam, and Danny Willett. I like that group quite a bit. I think they play off each other. They feed off each other really well. Uh, ben and Abraham Answer. I like them. Uh Kyung Jun Moon, I or however you say his name, I don't care. Uh, again, I don't care for any of the Asian golfers, but I do think Benny Ann and Abraham Answer can play off each other pretty decent. And then another good group that I like, Morikawa, Ryan Palmer, Billy Horschel, definitely a group I like. And then Victor Hovland and Cam Smith, uh, another duo that I like. That third is another Asian golfer that I know nothing of that, I'm just not going to play any of. I don't think any of them are good enough to finish inside the top 10. Um, what I should say, because why I wouldn't... So this tournament is very friendly for qualifications for Asian golfers. Uh, so you have golfers from the different Asian tours. I can't remember all of them. Uh, but you have, I think, 16 either exemptions or sponsorships that have all to do with Asian golfers. And I'm not saying they're not good. You'll see a couple of them in the top 300, top 200, top 100, because I did add uh, the golf rankings to the spreadsheet. I just don't, I mean, besides those golfers, the other ones I don't know enough of, and I don't think they're going to do well with how many good golfers are here. So that's the reasoning why. There is nothing else why uh, in case you wanted to stir something up. Um, so that's the tee times. Uh, 23 minutes, not bad. So when I went through this before the first time around, I was going through things and I'm like, oh man, let's just get right into lineups. And I'm probably going to do the same thing, uh, which is fine. Totally okay with that. We're going to hide these columns and also the odds. Because the odds to me, I just like looking at the odds afterwards. And once I get enough data to show odds of previous years, I think that'll help in determining, you know, hey, don't feel afraid of. And if I ever get into the betting market, I'd like to know what past years have done. I'd like to know the historic data. But here, here we go. The OWGR stands for Official World Golf Ranking. Uh, and I'm going to keep track of this every single week, and there, it will be in the spreadsheets to come. Uh, if we scroll down and we get to these guys down here at the bottom, you know what? I forgot. So we get down here towards the bottom. I already X'd out some of these golfers. I'm going to X out a couple more, actually. Probably not going to play Michael Kim. Anyways, uh, you can see some of these guys fall in the top 300. How does the official golf, uh, official world golf rankings work? Well, there are a bunch of uh, qualifying events that go around in the different tours, um, and you get points based off of winning or finishing inside the top three. 
a win on one of these Asian tours grants you like three points, maybe five towards the official world golf ranking. A win on a typical PGA tour event gives you 50. So it kind of gives you a little understanding of how, you know, points work. It is remarkable for some of these golfers to be ranked so high, seeing that they only play on the Asian tours. So that's, I mean, it's pretty interesting because that means they're golfing a lot of tournaments pretty decently. Um, the lowest golfer of these would be uh, Sang Hyung Park. And I mean, there are a few other ones really close, but really nobody really worth mentioning, honestly. Uh, I suppose the only other one would be Jung Gong Hwang. Other than that, uh, there's no ranking for some of these golfers uh, or they're like 250 or worse. So I'm not going to put any any stock into the Asian golfers, like I said before. Uh, but it is nice to see that the golf ranking, especially for golfers you guys have never heard anything of. Um, all right, so we'll hide the golf uh, ranking. Points per game and value, you know I don't really talk about that much, but in an event like this where it's no cut, um, a limited field, we're going to see softer pricing, and it's nice to see what that value is. Like Matthew Wolf at $8,800, you know, 1.2 value. That means he's over his points per game. You know, his pricing is actually lower compared to his price. That's basically what that means. Um, and you'll see a bunch of them down here, like 1,200. I think there's one at 1,300. Right? Yep. So Adam Long, I think, has the best value. I really personally don't care that much. I think last year Brooks Kepka was like a 1.2. Brooks Kepka. No, 1.0. Gary Woodland was a 1.2. So like 11 2 and 91, uh, their value was really good. We don't see that with any of the top guys except for Billy Horschel at 93. So he might be worth a play. Honestly, he might be worth a look. And I didn't even look at him the first time around doing these videos. Um,. One thing about recent form, I mean, if we went back and we looked at the 2019 recent form, 2018 recent form, one thing, uh, and I realized I didn't even go through this. Maybe I did. You don't see anybody with terrible recent form. Sure, one guy right there, Ben Ann, but then, you know, most of the top 20 does not have anyone dark red or light red, meaning their recent form was pretty good. Um... You know, you see a lot more of the golfers with bad recent form down at the bottom. And I think that's worth mentioning. I mean, that's this is 2018. Here's 2019. Uh, scroll down. Okay, so we have a few more people here with, you know, 60 or worse recent form. But as we scroll down, maybe not so many terrible golfers that year. But enough down at the bottom. Um, Kyle Stanley, Billy Horschel. They had decent recent form. So I guess for me, I just wouldn't play anyone with terrible recent form unless they had good bent grass stats. And I think these three golfers do have good bent grass stats. I think Ben Ann has decent. And I know Charles Howell has good bent grass stats. So that's worth mentioning. What I'm going to do right away off the cuff. Um, I mean, I like... Brooks Kepka, and I will be putting him in some of my lineups, but for just actually, let's go through the spreadsheet before I start uh, taking players away. So, getting rid of, I'm getting rid of, uh, removing the Asian tour golfers from uh, my criteria, I'm left with 67 golfers in the pool. Um, I'm also going to hide these two columns. We're not doing last week or last year buckets this week, there's just not enough information, so I'm going to hide that information as well. Uh, we'll get into the bent grass stats now, uh, and I'll go ahead and just come over here so you guys can see a little bit. Oh, you guys can see it fine. I was going to make sure um, that you guys can see it. So let's go by overall bent grass. You see all the stats going across right now. Um, now it'll go through high price to me medium, low price, that stuff. But once it gets to the grass stats, you'll see... Or I should say, you won't see Victor Hovland or Colin Morikawa on the overall bent because they don't have enough events in my eyes. 
they do for the 2019 because all of their events were from the 2019 season or from the green briar this year or i can't remember the other bankrass uh golf tournament if there was one i might be mixing up the houston open which was not bankrass um but for overall like jason day is the top followed by hideki matsuyama and jordan speed those three golfers pretty dynamite you have fleetwood following a little bit behind but he's like 11 points uh below day and matsuyama uh well not so much matsuyama but he's he's lower enough and then of course brooks kepka Sung Jae now kind of falls in the category of enough tournaments to go by bent grass, and he has great bent grass stats. So does Sergio and Matthew Wolf, but Matthew Wolf only has five events. Justin Thomas, pretty decent, and Rafael Cabrera Bayo. There's Ben Ann, like I was talking about earlier. I guess CH3 is not up at the top, uh, just I guess in the middle, so that's not bad. Um, we'll go ahead and sort by top 10 bent percentage which is the amount of times these golfers of their events have finished inside the top 10. So Jordan Spieth, 59 bent grass events. He has finished inside the top 10 in 42% of those events. That's what that stat means. That's what this column means. Um, so right away, I mean, again, you've got a lot of high price guys. Abraham Answer, the only person, 7,400, only person under $8,700 until we get down to Ian Poulter and some of these guys down here, um, which is a cherry pick stat, but still, he's a 29% clip of finding the top 10. It's pretty darn good. The uh, kind of caveat to all of that is his, he's got a missed cut, recent form average. So I don't know, you know, if we follow, you know, the trends from the last two years, do we play them? I think we do. I mean, I think, we're going to see uh, this tournament's going to be, or this this year's tournament's going to be a little different than uh, previous years. We'll see somebody with no recent form. We'll see somebody with, you know, miscut, I'm sure, inside the top 10. Uh, I'm going to follow it, not to the letter, but it's going to be close. So, like, of 40 lineups that I'm going to create, I'm probably have a Ram answer in five of them, just because. Um, 2019 Bentgrass stats, scroll up. Hideki Matsuyama is your leader. Uh, 16.1, followed by Justin Thomas's 16.5, and then it falls to 20 with Victor Hovland, Tommy Fleetwood, Gary Woodland, Ian Poulter, Colin Morikawa, and then it goes to the 30s, uh, and that's Cam Smith, which great course history, of course, with the last uh, two top 10 finishes. Um, we'll go ahead and get into the swing stats. As you know, I like to call those. Some people find that irritating, but that's fine. To me, their swing stats. Um, let's go ahead and just hide this one as well. How, what can you see? You can see all the way over to proximity. You cannot see. But let's not hide these two as well. And now you can see birdie or better. I would, I would like to think if you were to mix bent grass, which now I'm gonna have to open this back up. Uh, let's go ahead. Do overall bent grass. I'm just going to hide all of this now. Let's go with overall bent grass and birdie or better. Um, so I have these color coded. Light green is just top 20 in the field. Yellow is 20 to 40. Orange is uh, six or uh, 40 to 60. Uh, and... Yeah, we don't have over 80 golfers with stats. Some of them obviously don't have stats like Tommy Fleetwood and Ian Poulter. So I think there's like 56 golfers that have stats. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, we're not going to see any light red. Basically all I'm getting at. With birdie or better, I guess I could. we can sort by that. You don't really see the greatest of bent grass stats, but Matthew Wolf and Ryan Palmer with their, you know, their likelihood to find the top 10, it's pretty decent. Same with Colin Morikawa. Um, you don't really start getting into good bent grass stats until Victor Hovland and Justin Thomas. I don't think Hideki's on the top here, which is crazy. Hideki's down here 38th place. 
it's good to know because he's I mean he's a favorite of mine and it's nice to see that JT I mean pretty darn good T to green off the charts we went like off the T if that mattered any um yeah I'm not gonna worry too much about that Corey Connors Matthew Wolf with pretty or better Hovland with Gary Woodland eh, I don't care about you know I don't you guys know I don't care about swing stats. Okay. I'm look I just looked at the time, how long this has already taken. Uh I was already on lineups in the last video. So let's get to lineups. We've talked enough about um about these stats and what to look for. So I'll make this actually faster because I know how I did it last time. I'm gonna do it the same way. Uh Right away, I'm going to start with Hideki Matsuyama. And I joked, so this golf course is played at the nine bridges. I'm going to do factors of nine, essentially. So I'm going to create 18 lineups of Hideki. In those 18 lineups, I am going to put um, Siwoo Kim in, you guessed it, nine of them. And then one thing I'm going to do really quickly is of the 18 that are there, I'm not just going to put them all at the top because that kind of screws with you a little bit. I'm going to use the randomized range function in Google Sheets, which if you've seen the last couple uh, episodes or you know preview videos or whatever, you'll see the randomized range. I'm going to randomize it a couple times just to see something. I, like. I do not like that. Mm, how about no there that works for me don't ask me why it took me that long to get there i just didn't like how it looked and in those actually no no no. so we're gonna put brooks down here brooks was also in this uh this grouping here so what i'm gonna do with brooks is i'm gonna put him in six lineups because i have a bad case of fomo when it comes to brooks and in six of the lineups i'm gonna put siwu in three to make nine. You see the, the trend we're going through? And I'm not gonna worry there because obviously it doesn't make that big of a difference. And then my next favorite guy, um, it's gonna be Victor Hovland. And what I'm gonna do with Victor is I'm gonna put him in three there. I'm gonna put him in three up here. We'll put him in two with Kepka. I see, I know what I did. So we're going to remove that. I'm going to put Justin Thomas here in four, four lineups. Yeah. And then Hovland one, two, three, four. So there's three, six, nine lineups with Hovland in it. The Norwegian that he is. Um, let's see. And then I'm going to probably leave this open down here to create a more balanced lineup. Uh, there are certainly golfers I could choose, but what I'm going to do is allow for this next thing for you guys to see, because this was when I went through it the first time it was a little messy, but, uh, I know how to do it pretty quickly. We need golfers that are a low price in order to fit some of these guys up at the top, uh, a little bit more easier or easily. And... Um, in order to do that, so I already have favorites and you certainly can do this however you want. I, okay, here, here's my lineup that I would create. Okay. I know some golfers or some DFS pros like to do like a cascading method. Uh, and I had done that for a long time. I actually really like that strategy. So like these three are kind of my core. I really like those three. Um, I'm gonna go down here and find some golfers that I think are either a value at whatever I think they are. So like, I like Luke List. I know a lot of other people are gonna like him. I will say this, I liked him before hearing any of their uh, suggestions, mainly because of the course history. Um, and the recent form also fits. Now I might actually pivot to like Harold Varner the third, but 
for the purpose of this right now, I'm going to put Lucalus there. And then my next favorite play is actually I don't remember, but I do know Ian Poulter was this guy there. So $7,300. What did I have there? Was it Jazz? I think it was Jazz. It was probably it was probably Jazz or um was it Jazz? I want to say it was somebody at $7,100. Who would be at seven? It was probably a Harold Barnard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it was Harold Barnard the third. And really, even Ryan Palmer's right there. And I like Ryan Palmer. Because I do remember having $200 left over. So this would be my lineup. And if I was to cascade, what I would do, I think I need to get to there. Basically, I only do it by two. I don't do it by three like some people. Um, and I understand why they do it at three. But this is what I would do with my cascade. And then I would just look at my salary remaining and then select, you know, which golfers fit in that price. So that's how I would do that. This is this would be my my choice of players. Like if I was to create a core, this is what I like. But I don't, I've done it so many times that I hate getting burned. I don't like the all-in approach. Uh, and I get it. Like if Siwoo withdraws, which he very well could, I only have two lineups that I get to work with that might hit the nuts. I don't like that. I, I honestly, I, I, I would rather mix and match these golfers here because the, the lower we get on the spreadsheet or the lower we get in price, obviously the worse the odds get for them to win the tournament. Uh, and so what I would rather do is do something like this. Uh, actually, I'm gonna separate this in kind of a tier. So golfers here are gonna be like in one tier and then golfers down here are gonna be in another tier. What I'm gonna do right away is remove 85s, 75s. I'm basically removing all of the terrible recent form. So anything that was like light red or dark red, I'm removing all of them. And I will keep, I'll keep the blanks for now. Sure. So now this really limits, like it really lessens, not lessens, narrows my, my pool. So now I have 47 golfers I get to work with. But of the 47, I'm going to count this as like tier one. And uh, well, let's see, what did I have it? Well, not Siwoo. Must have been Kevin Tway down. Uh, Chesson Hadley down. And then here I'll just put like those golfers in. So you'll see. So these are my, my different tiers that I'm going to have. So I'm going to go from the bottom up. Um... And I'm just gonna start putting, oh boy, that's not what I wanted, not there. I need the color one. So we'll go there and then I will select these golfers. I'll even put some, some, some Sung King in there. I really don't care for Sung King, but just for this video, that's what I'm gonna do. So Tway is another one. Um, and then Chesson Hadley. Actually, you know what? I'll put Brian Stewart there as well. Okay, so you're like, what the hell is this? Why are you showing me all of this? Well, here's, here's the thing. I want to put these guys in some of my lineups. Not a lot, but just some. And the same thing applies with the golfers up here. I don't think Pat Perez would really count. So Palmer down. So I'm going to put that here. Now, this is where I'm going to select golfers that I like and play them a little bit more. So like Luke List, I'm going to go along with the whole factor of nine and put four or five lineups there. There we go. So now I have them in nine, nine total uh, lineups. Then I'm going to do this with Harold Varner. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um... I like Jazz. I'll put him in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a little bit. Five, seven, eight. Sure. Okay. Um, and I do like Chess and Hadley quite a bit. I'm gonna put him in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
One, two, three. Yeah, that's nine. Um, and then I think what I'm gonna do, since those, I do like Ryan Palmer quite a bit. Um, Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this open. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead, select all of these, or you know, from, okay, hold on. Let's see, so I did this a little different last time. I think I had more players available. Okay, hold on. Let me just reopen everything because I don't remember why I can't think of. There's obviously some. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, obviously, there's going to be mold breakers. That's where we're going at. I, I should have noticed that. So, like Keith Mitchell, decent bent grass stats. We're going to throw him in a couple lineups. I'm going to put him, you know, in a few here. Um. CT Pan, also a decent golfer, the 57th ranked golfer in the world. I'm going to put him in a couple lineups. Uh, Brandon Grace, the 102nd ranked golfer in the world. I'll put him in a couple lineups also. Um, I Let's see, I did include Matt Jones. Probably not Charlie Hoffman. I will also put him in a couple lineups. Not that I don't care that much for Charlie Hoffman. Um, JB, sure. Gotta have, gotta include him in a couple. Uh, maybe, yeah, I don't, I don't really care. I don't want to play him in more than two. And then the, some of these other guys down here, I, I really don't care for at all. At all. Maybe Danny Lee. Did I put him in a couple lineups up here? Why wasn't Dan? Oh, it's probably, okay. So, so Danny Lee, I'll put him in three lineups. Okay, that was the missing piece is to find some of these golfers that had bad recent form that I just, you know, took off the list because obviously I am i don't want to play anybody that has bad recent form. Um, I don't think I need to add anyone else. I think it's all pretty gravy. Oh, Kevin Streelman, jeez. I'll put him in three. Okay, so I created 40 lineups. So I'll get to the 41st line here. Obviously, the first one is my headers. Uh, and I will select all of these, these columns here and right-click randomize range. So this is going to randomize both columns. Uh, I don't really like how that looks for that. Are they randomizing them the same way? I would think so. I remember not doing this. Uh, the way that I just showed you for a reason and I just remembered what the reason was So I'm just looking for some gaps here and there um, Something that catches my eye and I can just go yep, I'm gonna stop I'll stop there um, And then the last piece to all of this is to make sure I don't have any duplicates which you can obviously see at the top but what I'm gonna do is create an if statement uh, if G2 equals H2, we want to make it a one. If not, we'll just keep it empty. So we'll go ahead, scroll down all the way to line 41, uh, just to make sure, or just to see how many we have. And what I'll end up doing sometimes, is I'll just go ahead and slot that there. So that takes care of two. So now I have Chess and Hadley there. Uh, so we have two jazzes here. I don't have a jazz with a Luke list and I do like that pairing together. So we'll get rid of that. This is empty, which is fine. This is not. So guess what? I'll move Harold Varner up to there. And that should take care of all of my, um, my duplicates. So there we have it. That's how I will randomize my lineups because I don't know who's paired together with whom. Sure, I did add a few of them together, but that's fine. At least it's not me going through every single one and saying, I want these guys paired up together. Um, I do know that's how you maximize your profits, but it is also how you maximize your losses. 
and I would have, I would venture to say 10, you're winning 10% of your lineups. So if you are going 86% deep into all your contests with the same golfers, like you may never, I would say if you're doing 10% winnings, that's, that's from having a completely just different, um, or of players. So if you condense that, I think your your winning chances probably get lower. And I honestly, I don't like your chances to win if you do do that. Now, I like your chances to win a lot of money doing that, but I don't like your chances of winning, period, um, if you do it that way. So this is a way for me to randomize that, that type of stuff. So I don't get to see exactly who I'm, I'm pairing up. Um, I'm also gonna do this with Victor Hovland. Oh, I like that, that looks good. Uh, in all of his pairings, you know, just to see where fate may put them, you know, I don't care. And then the rest of these, I'm gonna go through and create. So like right here, I only need to create one more lineup or one more person there at $9,000. Who can I put <clears throat> at 9,000 that I like? I do like Cam Smith. I could put Cam Smith there. I could also put Matthew Wolf. Because I really like Matthew Wolf. Why not put Wolf there? So not only do I have four golfers that kind of fall under the same bucket of last year and last week. So last that this would be that they haven't played last year. Um actually, you know what? Just for the sake of it, let's let's put Cam Smith. You know, we talked about him. There we go. So now my lineup is set. I have one lineup already done. Um, and so now I get to, you know, piece together all of these. So now I, I will be creating choices, but I like that. I mean, like, look at how much money I have left over on a bunch of these lineups. Here's a bit more open. Um, I'll probably start from the right and move my way left to see who I can fit here. Um, but I think that's, that is my strategy. I like, I like that quite a bit. Um, there we are 52 minutes. I told you guys, oh man. Um, well, it's fine. I, I don't mind talking and, and explaining my process and going through that, uh, week after week, maybe, uh, I'll review some of my videos and, and try to make something maybe a little faster, but, uh, I'm going to leave it here for two reasons. One, it's already getting long Two, it's, um, some some people dislike when someone creates lineups through their videos. I just want to show you a process, and that's what I was able to do. Um, and you guys can obviously refine it however you want it, but I'm not giving you lineups. Um, I'm giving you ideas. I'm giving you certain players, but I'm giving you a lot of space basically to come up with your own. Sure, 9,500 to fit two spots, that can only lead to so many players, but guess what? I bet you anything, there's probably 50 combinations that you can put right there. You may not get on the same one as me. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But either way, that's another reason I'm gonna end it, but I do appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I think, so what I was gonna do, what I said uh, in my last video, obviously you guys didn't see it, but I had said, um, if you've made it this far, comment, and you will get next week's spreadsheet. I will send you a link to next the next week's spreadsheet. But then I realized next week is the Zozo Championship, which never been played. So you honestly would just get, um, I mean, it, it's gonna be similar to the CJ Cup. So like the CJ Cup, you know, I have results, course history, 20 DK page, 20 recent form page, the 2020, I should say. You wouldn't have 2019 or 2018 recent form. You'd get the notes page, tee times page, 2020 PJ stats, and that's it. That's what would be there. But if you want that, comment in the section, and I'll, I'll send you the link. Um, otherwise, wait till after... I, I'll say it in one of the next upcoming weeks. It won't be next week, and I don't think it'll be the week after. It'll be a week where I actually have some good data that you guys can use. Uh, just just to pay you guys a little bit, you know, of my appreciation. 
just uh and also so you guys can see this firsthand uh instead of me just kind of going through it uh, and it'll help you follow through uh, or follow with it and give you ideas if you want to do it yourself so anyways that was a ramble um thank you for watching guys i always forget to say but in the description down below you can find my email address you can also find my twitter handle uh i do post on twitter whenever i can uh it's not the greatest but um you'll see whenever my preview videos come out whenever my um review videos come out and by the way lineups lock i think at like 1 p.m central uh nope 2 p.m central standard time i'm pretty sure so make sure you get your lineups in this week as well all right guys that's enough thank you for watching hit a like comment subscribe all that good stuff and i will see you uh probably sunday or monday with a review video all right